saying, hey, you look around. You look around this world and you see, it's, I mean, it's a mess. Just look, at, I mean, especially if you've heard about what's going on with the elections now, or if you want to call it that. It is a, I mean, you're talking a divided nation. Worse than I ask a, a friend of mine who's almost in his 80s and almost 80, and he said he's never seen anything like this. But you, but you, you look at these, these politicians and you say, my goodness, how can they get away with what they're getting away with? Especially, we call this a Christian nation. There's a church on every corner. And sometimes these churches have up to 10,000 people in the congregation. And you've got these politicians with their mainstream mafia uh, machines, media machines, and they're pushing their agenda. Let me give you some statistics here, okay? And this is, this is going to blow your mind. It's estimated there are over 200 million Christians in the USA alone. 200 million. Now, let's see. How many politicians are in the United States? Well, if you take Congress, you take the Senate, you take the House of Representatives, you take mayors, you take governors, you pile them all together. I'm going to take say, the high-ranking officials, not you know the politicians, not, not the lower end. But I, I counted it up, and it's something like, I don't know, like, 21,000, if, if you count the whole thing across the nation, okay? And by the way, we're talking about America, but I'm also talking about your country. Uh, we have a lot of people worldwide, different countries that, that are part of this gathering. America is just symbolic. You know, what happens here is going to go across the world, all right? So where, where are we? Okay, so we got about 21,000 uh, uh, politicians nationally, all right? But how many Christians are in the U.S.? 200 million Christians? And how many politicians? 21,000? Christians have politicians outnumbered over 9,000 times. In other words, there's 9,000 times more Christians than there are politicians. Now, I'm generalizing here, but stay with me. You see... These, the politics in the world is like a, it's like a little bit in a horse's mouth, okay? It's, it's small, it's tiny, but yet it seems to dictate and guide the whole horse, which is us. Now, see, this is backwards. Because Jesus was one man. He came into the world. One man changed the world. He picked his disciples a small, a handful of men changed the world. The church of Acts changed the world, but now it's the world changing Christianity. Everything has been turned backwards, and Scripture talked about this. And hey, preacher, I want to ask you a question. Where are you? There should be 10 preachers for every one politician speaking out. For every one politician that's that's speaking out, either for us or against us, there should be 10 preachers, at least, taking a platform for God. Yeah, we got some politician. We don't need to take back the backseat to a, to a godless political rhetoric. We're God's chosen people. These marches, these riots, these protests, these signs, the right, the left, the dims, Republicans. The only sign I want to see is the sign of leadership, a sign of, of spiritual leaders, preachers out taking up the word of God and marching forward not caring about their life, but caring about the truth of God. That's the sign I want to see. But while the Titanic's sinking, we got preachers that's preaching to the congregation how to polish the silverware. As the boat's going down. Folks, where are our leaders? And the last thing I want to say, and I'm sorry to get so passionate about this, I saw Donald Trump when he was inaugurated, and I saw all these big-time pastors, well-known preachers, 
mosey in their way to the White House, laying hands on Donald, praying for him. And I looked at my wife, and I won't say which pastors, and I said, honey, there's some NARs in that bunch, and they're putting hands on our president, and he has no idea what's going on. No idea what's going on. Now, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Be careful who you let put hands on you. All right? Anyway, <laughs> sorry for the rant. Oh, Pastor Mike, are you with me? David, how are you this evening? So, you know, um, you know again, I, I, my wife says, David, don't bash on pastors. I said, look, it's not that I'm bashing on pastors, but I'm passionate. Look, when you take the pulpit, because you're a preacher, and there's a grave responsibility, right? When you pick up that Bible and, and you say, I'm going to carry forth the Word of God, and, and you have a platform, the pulpit, and you get up there and you start preaching a lollipop Candyland sermon, uh, I, if, where are the preachers at, uh, Pastor? If you, maybe you can tell me, other than you and a few others, but where are the big time guys? Like, you know, that you, <laughs> that you saw at the inauguration laying hands. Where are they at? I don't hear any voices. Well, and, and, and you won't, unfortunately, David, because the big time pastors all have a, a ministry name and brand to protect. So they're going to walk the middle of the road. They're not going to come out forcefully against the things that need to be spoken about. And it's just a sad reality today. Those of us who are, we are going to, unless God decides to elevate us, we are going to remain very small, but we're going to be very impactful. Look at, look at the ministry the Lord has given you, David, in, in the gathering in this Monday night show. Look at the impact you're having. So yes. I, I, I draw hope in what, what the Lord is doing through people like you, what the Lord is doing through, through my ministry. We, we may be small in the world's eyes, but God is using us in powerful ways. Amen, brother. You are so right. And I feel so honored. And I know you do, too, to be able to um, to be a warrior for God. Um, I want to ask you real quick, because some late breaking news um, with the election with uh, Donald Trump. Uh, now, I know he hasn't conceded, conceded, but he gave Joe Biden a um, uh, kind of like a ticket to go and, and start doing a transition uh, and it looks like he's separated from, from uh, Attorney Powell. Uh, what is this, what, what's this thing looking like in your book? What, what are you thinking? Yeah, so it's, it's uh, all political strategy. A lot of it's theater, um, optics, how he is crafting uh, the perception. This thing is a long way from over. It's going to end up in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is going to decide uh, the evidence is going to be, they're not going to provide evidence for this massive fraud at appellate or federal. It's going right to SCOTUS and, right. and it'll be proven and, and won there. Uh, I still believe that Trump is going to win a second term. And I, I believe that based on the massive fraud that they've uncovered and the proof that they have of it, David. So, uh, that's that's my take on it, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm I'm. That is my belief that Trump's going to win a second term. Well, you know what? Here's here's what I'd like to say, and I I agree with you. I think there's a very good chance, and we both know that God's in control, and we both know that it really doesn't matter who's president. God can right. <laughs> God can use right. anybody He wants to use, but in in our pea brain. Um, I don't think Donald Trump, I think he'll always be someone's president. You see, if for some reason he doesn't stay in the White House, you've got, I believe, more than half this country supporting him and following him and wanting and saying, hey, you're still my president. You may not be in the White House. I think we've turned a corner. It's a paradigm shift. I've never seen anything like this to where I... Uh, a, a guy may step out of office, but people go, you, you're not in office, but you're still my president. What's your name? Biden? What? What, what are you talking about? Do you think there's a, I mean, does that sound logical that that could be Trump could still have this kind of a I don't know. What would you call that? It would be a, um, a secondary uh, presidential office. Well, he would he would be so. uh <laughs> 
that would almost be like a shadow government. That <laughs>